So it was amazing with um, his name, my brother, um, John Duncan, was our guest speaker today at church. And he he was a dynamic speaker. And I was totally inspired by his ministry of going out in the street and telling people about Jesus, talking about the love of Jesus. And that is something that we all are called to do, including myself. It's funny how when he was speaking, you know, God has a way of, I made a declaration for the beginning of this year that I was going to focus on doing being about the Father's business, the things that He's calling me to do, I was going to do it to pursue, to pursue ministry, whatever. I'm going to use my talents, my ability to draw, my ability to sing, my ability to share the Word of God, and definitely my ability to share my testimony with others is to empower other brothers um, as I have been empowered by the Lord. And when He was giving us this message, He talked about having the guts having the guts to dream and pursue the dream that God has given us. All of us have a purpose. He was reminding us that all of us had a purpose. And we shouldn't let anything stop us from fulfilling the purpose that God has placed inside of us. And I looked at, we had received that message when he was talking directly to me. Have you ever been in the service where, like I said, when the preacher is bringing a message to you and it seems like he's speaking directly to you. And you have to understand, I had to understand that the Lord set it up. He set it up. It lets me know each and every day that I find that the glory of God is always the moment that I'm seeking him and reading his word or attending church or being a part with the people, uh, people of God. He always manifests. He's always giving me a confidence. He's always giving me an encouragement to move forward with what he has given me. And the thing about what he's given me is bigger than me. And it, it makes me nervous. It did make me very afraid. And I was very timid about going forth with his message. And that's all because I didn't understand what it was. And, you know, and I think he planted a seed, which was a mustard seed when we began in 1989. And it grew in my in my life now at the age of 56. You know, so now, you know, the tree has been made. You know, the roots are deep now. Um, but anyway, um, Brother John Dinkin gave us a message about having the guts to follow your dream and pursue your dream until it manifests. One point that he made, don't let your your time, your age ever prevent you from going forward with the purpose that God has given you. It doesn't matter about your age. He gave examples of peop people in the Bible that God had used at the old age where they stepped into their ministry. You know what I'm saying? Things happen. It does. It happens. It doesn't matter what age you are, that it happens. But knowing that he's given you something, that he's going to bring it to pass. The next point he made, that yes, he can bring it to pass, but he can't bring it to pass if I'm sitting on it. If I'm sitting in this apartment with a vision and a dream in my head, but I'm not putting in the effort to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? And when we do that, we, we prevent it, we hinder our own selves. He made up another point for another point that you have to fight. You have to fight. If God has given you a vision, it's not going to fall in your lap and everything's perfect. No. There is going to be observation. Obser um, it's going to be some hindrance, opposition. Yeah, as you're going forth, there's going to be some opposition. Things are going to stop you. You're going to go through some things, some trials, you know, some ups and some downs. Going to the mountaintop means there must be a valley, and we have to go through that valley. The problem is when we're going through the valley, we can't let that stop us or hinder us and thinking that we can't reach that mountain. Yes, we can. He was making that very clear to us. And we can't be lazy about the ministry that God has given us. We can't sit in the house. You can't. I can't afford to sit in my house, sit in my chair, and writing down the plan, seeing the vision, and not putting any action to it. I've got to get busy and get out there and believe it. That God is the one that's going to make it all come. He's the one. To give me the help to follow it through. And he can be letting us know in the word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So he's right there when we are weak. He's the one that's strong. If God's given us a vision, which he has given me, I now know with full confidence that he's going to do the rest. He's going to help me along the way because I don't know how to do it without him. I know what he told me to do. And I have to go through that and have faith that he knows what he's doing and that's the message that um brother deacon was saying having the guts so now i'm at that point now i had to decide 
Am I going to have the guts to go forth in ministry? Am I have the guts to say what the Lord wants me to say and share with you what he's done in my life? To hope it does something to you to make you act and make you accept him. I can't make you do anything. But anyway, just inspire you. If I can't do nothing else, let me inspire you. And I believe that's an anointing that God has given me. I, I can get you excited. I can get you excited about the Lord because he makes me excited. I don't know if you've ever seen me in worship. When we come to praising the Lord or talking about the Lord, I, I just get charged up. There's something about just the feeling of the anointing on you and the love that he has. I don't know if any of you brothers have ever had the love of Jesus, have ever experienced the love of Jesus. It's totally different from experience from a woman and from a man totally different totally totally different when he loves you and loves on you it can't be measured with anything else it won't be measured by anything else because it's, a, it's such a pure love it's a it's a unconditional love and you don't you no one can experience that without sign of jesus christ <laughs> understand me myself. nobody can experience that outside of jesus christ and i love him for that i, I love him for that so the message that God has given me, he's given me a task about sharing my life, you know, the lifestyle that I live. And I'm not ashamed of it, yes. For many years, I accepted the labels that other people have given me, telling me who I was, who I was. And it's funny, if you're growing up, you know, and I, I'm, I'm a victim of um, child abuse, sexual abuse, and I am a victim of not having a father when I was a, when I was a child. But there's no excuse. Now, today, that's no excuse. That's over. That's dealt with. That's done. We're getting ready to go forward with the power of Jesus Christ. The message is not so much about my testimony, about uh, the evil that I have done and the wickedness and, the, and all of that to publicize on that. The fact of it is I had to go through that to get to where I am. That was my valley. That was my valley. God had a purpose. I was going to make it to the mountaintop, but I had to go through different cycles in my own life to experience the valley. Everybody it's going to have a valley experience and how you come out of that valley experience will determine how far you get up on that mountain period but God was reminding me what he's calling me to is to call out Adam where art thou every brother out there I, my heart goes out to you so many times as years have gone past I have seen the fire and, and, and brothers lives just seem to go out you know what I'm saying just temporary um, fire that's in them um, just no gleam you know no, no essence of who they are you know who they really are and, and I think I quit that to the fact that I don't have a relationship with God. I look the same way without hope, but I could put on a smile. I mean, I can make you seem like I got it going on. You know what I'm saying? I got my looks. Um, I got money. Got a job. You know, uh, I, I'm hot in the bed. You know what I'm saying? You know, oof, shoot, I'm a bag of chips. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and I used to live, and I lived that way. But I lived my life in so many years trying to be something to meet the approval of other people. Other people, I'm telling you, this world is so full of images, labels, and everybody's trying to live up to something or trying to be something that they're not. So the God was giving me uh, a notion once I came to myself that I was trying to be like, you know, I was trying to be, I was trying to be the husband, I was trying to be the father, I was trying to be the, the good co-worker, uh, the good employee, employee um, the good um, Christian brother, I was trying to be the good dancer, uh, trying to be the good lover, you know what I'm saying? All my life I spent trying to be something, but it never dawned on me just to be myself because I used to think being myself was something wrong you know when I was growing up you know being molested and all that good stuff that takes a lot from a boy especially if he's a boy that's been molested uh, it takes a lot it took a lot out of me because you're always trying to seek and getting your approval and it's no shame in that. I have no shame in that you know what happened in my life what happened in my life but what I have right now wouldn't trade a thing 
I'm glad I experienced all the things that I did experience because it makes me who I am today. And I'm the one that makes the choice. I'm going to serve God. I love him. And I know what he's done with me. And I know what he's telling me. He's telling me that he loves you, my brother. He loves you just where you are. He wants our relationship with us so, so badly. He wants us to get that before he returns. He wants us to be ready because he want to take us. He want to take us in it. In the kingdom, he wants us. He want to hear our voices. He want to see, hear our voices, giving them praise. He want to see us taking our rightful place in the kingdom. Come on now, we can't sit around with all this mess that's here in this world because this world offers us stuff that has no life for us to live. But we have to make that decision. But anyway, you know, I can go on and on about what he's telling me, what he wants to do with us. He wants his men back, and he asks me, "I want you to go out there and you call out Adam, where are thou?" Now every Everybody, when I be when I'm making these posts, it's not gonna be for every brother. I'm not talking to every brother. I'm only talking to the brothers that God has assigned, the ones that God is calling for, the ones that God wants to have an intimate relationship with. If you're not chosen by Him to have an intimate relationship, then this message is not prepared for you just yet. Uh, hope is not lost. There's a there's a moment where you will accept the call, but until then, don't even. Don't even work yourself up. Listen to this. And want to debate it and all that good stuff because it's not about debates. Only thing I'm doing is sharing my life story and what the Lord has done in my life and telling you that the Lord wants a relationship with you, each and every one of you, especially the brothers. The brothers, he sees where you are. He knows it's not easy being a man in the day and time that we live in. I understand there are so many things coming against us. We got the racial issue. We got the, the, the sexual issue. We got so many issues that we're dealing with, but we're trying to do it ourselves. We're doing it without Christ. We're not even putting them involved in it because we're trying to be the man that the world says that we should be. We're trying to be the type of man that the world says we should be, what we dictated on television, how we dress, how we talk, how we walk. Just stop all that. We need to get back to the fact that Jesus wants us. He wanted me to understand. Please excuse me, but I don't want to include anybody so nobody won't get offended. But I want to talk about me because I know what he did for me. That's the main thing that's important for me when I'm doing the ministry is to talk about what the Lord has done in my life, how he changed my life, the life that I used to live, what I used to believe in, what did I partake, partook in, but what would I believe in what I did. And that can be ashamed and not intimidated by anybody else who doesn't agree. But anyway, that's another story. But anyway, just the main thing I'm excited about is to, to having the guts to go for, having the guts to lay myself out there, to be that sacrificial lamb, to expose myself so it can help somebody else. Because it's not about it's not about me and being isolated. You know, no, it's about sharing what the Lord has done. We have to get about sitting back and acting like, you know, everything is fine. Everything is not fine. This world we're living in is in trouble. And it's in trouble because there's no relationship with God. And how is it falling apart? Because the men are not in place. The men don't love God anymore. Not the majority. The majority needs to have an intimacy relationship. Excuse me, I didn't mean to go there, but I'm saying, ah. It's not about anybody else. I have to look at myself and say, John, what are you doing? Are you doing what God has called on you to do? So, brothers, I'm asking, are you doing what the Lord has told you to do? Are you living your life the way he told you to live? Not by the world system, but him. Now, he is doing that with me. And I want to share the steps that he's going with me. And what I'm doing is calling out to everybody. Adam, where are thou? Letting you know that Jesus wants you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to accept you just the way you are. Only thing he wants you to acknowledge him in your life. Seek him out. Know that he loves you. And know the kind of love he has for you. Can that be measured by anything else other than the purity of who he is? Are there changes? Are there hard times? Yes. That's because you love Jesus. Don't mean everything is going to go peach, you know, smooth. No. You, you No. It's not going to happen. But through it all. Oh, but through it all, oh, man. You will find on the other side that it's glorious. That is so, so exciting. It makes a really difference. And the thing about it, when you come to that place of glory with him, you want to reach out to somebody else and tell them about the goodness of the Lord. Well, I'd encourage you right now, get a chance, read Genesis 3. 
that's my that's my message Genesis 3 and Acts 3 those are things that have a foundation in what I stand on and what has brought me to come to the Christ and understanding who he is and Acts I mean in Genesis 3 we find out the story of Adam in the garden when he called out Adam where art thou that's the theme of this crusade I'm on a crusade right now I'm going to use this message in these in these um, these videos just to keep that crusade going Adam where art thou it's going to be just me talking to you I'm going to invite some friends over we're going to have a conversation and let the Holy Spirit lead I'm one of those that believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit can change everything and the Holy Spirit is the best planner for anybody's life especially my brothers I'm seeing too many brothers lose the fire that's in them due to um, poverty due to not having a place to live lack of job you know bad poor Poor choices. But God wants to change all that. Only thing He wants us to do is look at Him, seek His face, understand who He is. Not for no capital gain, not for greed, not for nothing else other than a pure relationship. And we can't do it ourselves. No man should think that He is so man enough that He doesn't need Jesus and He can control His own life. You have no life to control if He's not a part of it. You have no love in your life unless He's a part of the love that you have. You understand what I'm saying? We can't do it without him. Anyway, read Genesis 3 and answer that question to yourself. Where are you? Do you know where you are? And if the Lord was to ask you right now, you heard him calling your name and asking you, where are you? Will you be able to tell him where you are and be honest with you, with yourself? Start from there. If you can answer him, then great keep pursuing that if you can't answer him then I encourage you seek him out spend some time with him he wants to have a relationship with you the best way to have a relationship with him if you want to start off read his word read his word attend church you know and then watch the churches that you're doing I believe personally believe for me I needed to know Jesus before I went to church I had to understand and long for him in this book and when I came to Christ I came to him through through pictures when I was a child. I used to look at the, the drawings. I had a picture Bible. The illustrations were awesome. And that sparked my desire to draw or to learn how to draw. And that sparked my natural ability to draw by reading the word and seeing it in pictures and understanding the pictures, even though I couldn't understand the word. You know, you can read a picture. And, and that's how I came to know. So... I was known and got introduced to him that way before I actually went to a church. When I went to the church, what I found out is the love of Jesus through song, praise and worship. And, and that ignited my voice. And I wanted to sing. I wanted to sing for the Lord and be a part of the whole system. It's funny when, you look, when I look over my life, the, the progression of knowing Jesus from a little mustard seed to, to my awesome praise, being in his presence and giving him everything I got. I have within me to give him glory and knowing that he's using my life to call out to the brothers and asking the question and I'll be out there he wants me to ignite hope listen to this ignite hope in the lives of men who struggle with sexuality in the love of Jesus don't allow your sexuality or the, the choices that you made with, about your sexuality is to hinder you from having a relationship with God don't listen to people telling you oh no you can't have a relationship with God if you're doing this or you're doing that. Who is without sin? Just because you have sin, does that mean you can't have a relationship with Christ? You better get it right. He came to all of us. Look, Jesus died on the cross for sin. He died on the cross for sin. Does he want us to continue in sin? No. No. But he's the one that can help us. It starts off with the relationship with Christ. Allow him to lead you. Allow him to tell you who you are. When you look in the mirror and if you see the word gay, somebody ask yourself, hey, you know you're gay, right? I looked in the mirror and said that same thing. You know you're gay, right? And I said, yeah, God accepts me. And I said, wow, gay, God accepts me. That's the thing. We had to get into our minds and a heart that God accepts me, not accepts any sin. If it's not walking in the spirit and it's walking in the flesh, he doesn't, he doesn't like us walking in the flesh. He wants us to walk in the spirit. And we have to decide which way we're going to choose. If you look in Genesis, Genesis 5, you will see the difference between walking, walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit. Very interesting point. Because I remember when people would 
when we talk about talk about um talk about me when I was growing up because I was I was an example of walking in the spirit but the world will reject someone walking in the spirit especially if he's a male now first we're going to talk about walking in the, in the flesh and walking in the flesh people are more accepted to people who walk in the flesh than they do with people who walk in the spirit this is listen, listen to this and we're going to read from Genesis 5 19 now that the works of the flesh are manifested which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lag chivalrousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance um, emulation wrath strife seduction heresy envy murder drunkenness, raveling, and such of these that which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes, listen to that. You won't inherit the kingdom of God, but you will probably inherit the kingdom of the world. And the kingdom of the world is going to come to pass. The kingdom of the world is full of madness. Whatever you give in the flesh is going to be given back to you in the flesh. That's what I see with all of that. You know what I'm saying? But look, look at your television shows. It has adultery in it. It has fornication in it. It has uncleanness in it. It has wrath, hatred, seduction. All these things. They're popular shows. <laughs> we celebrate it. We celebrate. Let me get to the point. We have murder. Shoot, we're so used to murder that it's like, mm, okay, I'm glad it wasn't me. You know what I'm saying? Look how detached we are. Now, for me, that listen to the fruit of the spirit. When I was reading, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. And they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions. In lust, affections in lust. Is that right? Affections in lust. Now, when I read that, it made me look at my own self. I said, man, for all my life, I've always walked in spirit. And I was always criticized for being full of love. I was criticized for being in joy. I was criticized for walking in peace. I was criticized for me doing all the madness. I was criticized for being gentle. I was criticized for being having a goodness. I was criticized when I was walking in faith. I was criticized when I was my meekness. I was criticized for my temperance. You understand? The world rejects that. It gives it a label. What's the label? It's just this. And it's always something negative. But if I were a liar or a cheat, I would have been so accepted. You wouldn't call me nothing, but oh, that's a liar. But a liar is more accepted than someone in peace. A liar, you know, a whoremonger is more accepted than one full of joy. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? A murderer will get more accepted than someone kind. You know what I'm saying? Oh, ain't that sweet? You know what I'm saying? But a murderer, oh, my goodness, he's a murderer. People are fascinated by it. You know, <laughs> crazy. But anyway. We're not dealing with that right now. We want to get into that point. And when the conversation, let the Holy Spirit lead. But that was one point he wanted to, to bring forth about the labeling thing. When people will call you labels because you're different. We got to accept the fact there's some people out here walking in the fruit of the spirit. And a lot of, and some people are walking in the spirit of the flesh. If you're going to look at people, recognize what are they walking in. But a lot of people don't even know they're walking in the flesh because they never read it. They're just thinking they're being themselves. And when they're always pointing their finger at somebody else that they know about is sinful, but they're not even looking at themselves. They can call someone out of their name or call them this and call them that and not even looking at their own selves. The Lord said, he who without sin cast the first stone. We all are sinners saved by grace. If we want to just live in sin, then that's our choice. Living it. Living it. But don't, don't get mad and reject somebody who's not. Why do you do that? I mean, it's going to cost you in the long run. But anyway, we want to ignite hope in the brothers who are struggling with their sexuality. 
and the love of Jesus Christ. One thing for sure, know that Jesus loves you, whatever the condition that you are in. There is still hope for you, and you need to reach on for that hope. Too many of us are walking around. Too many of us, I walked around too long feeling hopeless. You know what I'm saying? Looking like I was... I wasn't worthy. I had to be like this in order to be accepted. You know what I'm saying? I had to be something else other than who I am to get approval. <laughs> really? Man, nobody has to go through that. I just praise God for the love and the ability to change your life inside out. Inside out. Is it easy? No. Do I have to struggle and make sure I maintain? Yes. I had to stay before the throne of God. I will never be that holy. You know, untouchable by temptation, untouchable by sin. No one is. I don't try and I don't confess to be, but I do know the goodness of the Lord. I know the joy of the Lord that I have found, the joy of the Lord that I'm living in. And my main goal is to let other brothers know. <laughs> Have a relationship with Christ. It will change your life <laughs> for the better, for the better. Whoever you love, you know, love for the right reasons. Don't be loving in lust. Don't be loving after the flesh. Love after the spirit, whoever you may be. But me, brothers, I'm, I'm for you. My prayers are with you that you, you find a way that you can have a relationship with Christ and walk with him um, and have him a part of your life. He makes a difference. It's not easy, and you cannot do it by yourself. Get another brother along with you. Uh, that you can be accountable with, you know, or just have fun with, talk, talk to, but talk real, talk, real talk, you know, no foolishness, you know, try to govern your, your conversation, just, you know, and I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I have to do it, I have to watch who I'm around, and the conversations I have with other brothers, I have to make sure that I'm keeping it clean, keeping it non-sexual, keeping my keeping myself from entering into that, to that arena, because I don't want to do anything that will hinder me from the kingdom of loving him the way that I love him. Every man is going to love Jesus a different way. Every man, I realize, are different. I'm different from you. You're different from me. I will never knock you. Don't, don't, don't judge and knock me. Okay? We are all in this together. We all want to have a relationship with God. You know, for some of y'all, you don't want to have a relationship with Christ. Hey, but you're missing out. You're missing out on a really abundant life. So, with that, <sighs> I'm going to end it here. So uh, just, just be blessed. I encourage you to spend some time with the Lord. Spend some time with the Lord. Get to know Him because He loves you so much. You know, and, and be encouraged. Your sexuality does not keep you from the kingdom of God. Not keep you from the love of Jesus. Just accept Him and learn about Him. He'll do the rest. He'll lead you and guide you. The Holy Spirit is what we truly need. For permanent change. I hope you get some hope. Get that hope in you. Be inspired. I want to ignite you with hope. You know, from every brother who struggles with sexuality and the love of Jesus Christ. I lived it. I struggled. And the Lord has truly pulled me out. He's the one that can do it. Now, I have a choice. I can slip back. You know, I'm going to be bad. I gotta tell you a story about that. I wanted to be bad. And the experience I had while I was trying to be bad. I don't want to do that again. But anyway, you guys be blessed, my brothers. This is for you. Uh, I want to share my life and my journey with Christ. And hoping and doing what He's asking me to do is to share my testimony to help someone else. So let's see where we go with this. I'm almost looking for an opportunity to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, the love of Jesus Christ, and how my sexuality was about to hinder me from receiving the love of Jesus. That we all can have it. We can all can have it. Don't reject them. And don't exclude them from life, whatever you're doing. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Hey, let me, let me pray right now. Hey, Heavenly Father, I bless the person, people, Father God, who are listening to this, this video, Lord. May they receive what you have, have them to receive, Father. Let them live a life, Father God, seeking you and wanting to be where you are, Lord. Being a part of you, O oh God. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, your loving on each and every man, Father God, that hears this message, oh God, to be inspired, not to criticize, not to condemn, Father God, but for the love, Lord Jesus, your kind of love, Lord Jesus, the love that you can put on them that will make them different. You will touch them in the area of their struggle, oh Lord Jesus, in such a way that they know without a doubt that you touched them, oh God. I pray, Father God, that the peace will follow them, Father God. Clarity and understanding will lead them directly to your doorstep, O oh God. O oh, Lord Jesus, pull your arms around and let them feel your presence, O oh God. Let others come into them, Father God, or be around them, surround them with your love and seeing demonstrations that follow, O oh God. Father God, you're the only one can change a person, can change a man, can change his heart. Father God, from a stone to flesh, oh God, oh glory, Lord Jesus. I, I, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for taking me out of the Mary Clay, oh God. I thank you for putting me on a straight street, Father God, following right after you, Lord, loving you, oh God. Loving you is the best thing that has ever happened to me, Father God. And you loving me back, oh God. And I know that you desire for every brother, Father God, to receive and accept your love, the love that you're going to give them. Every man should be loved by Jesus. Everybody should know a love like that, Lord, loving you and you loving them back, Lord. All the young brothers, Father God, give them, ignite them with hope, O oh God, that they will make the right choices and look at themselves as a product of value, O oh God, that they are valued. Every man is valued. We carry the seed, seed for life, O oh glorious Lord. Let us not take life, but let us give life, share life, the way that you inspire us, O oh God. Bless every brother, Lord. Bless every brother, Father God. Find a place in them, O oh God, that place, Father God, that's been covered up, Father God, that place in their spirit, O oh God, that's been ignored, overlooked, O oh God. Ignite it, Lord. Ignite their hope, Father God. Whatever that they're going through, Father God. Touch them, Father God, that they will know, the Lord Jesus, you are truly the answer. You are truly the, 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 solve, the problem solver, Father God. You are, yes, indeed, the solution to everybody's life. Don't struggle. Why struggle alone? There's a Lord God ready to take it, receive it. He said, cast all your burdens on him, then do it. But if you don't know what to do if you don't read his word. You don't want to know what kind of relationship you can have if you don't know his word. You understand it's not about you walking into a church, Father God. Let him understand it's not about walking in the truth in a church, Father God. It's like having a relationship. Start where they are. Just talk to you, Father God. Let him hear your voice, Father. Comfort them, Father God. Ignite their hope. That's my prayer. Ignite their hope, Father God, that their hope can be fulfilled in you. We bless you, Lord. Bless them tonight. Bless them, Lord. Bless them through the day. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, God. <laughs> He's an awesome God. Anyway, you brothers, you have a blessed day or night. Um, whenever you're, you're, you're viewing this, um, share it. You know, put the word out. Why don't you ask your best friend, hey, is the Lord would have coming back right there, right today, and ask you, where are you? What would you say? And I encourage you, don't forget, I want you to read Genesis, Genesis 3, read the whole thing. <laughs> Get an understanding where I'm coming from. All right, and don't forget Galatians 5. You know, I'm walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit. All right, peace and love always. May you be encouraged. Amen.